What can we learn from the fact that animals, in order to be kosher, have to have split hooves? What do we care? What does it mean to us? What if we don't like to eat meat? So this doesn't apply to us? No, the Torah applies to every single Jew. In fact, indeed every person, but especially every Jew. Torah is for the Jews. Page, no, page, no, <clears throat> every Jew has to have split hooves and chew his cut. What does that mean? Spiritually, split hooves means that your contact with the world. The hooves are what touches the ground. Your contact with the world has to be split. What does it mean? It's not <clears throat> just there's world is one separate thing and there's you is a separate thing. You're a religious Jew. You have to just deal with the world as little as possible <clears throat> and <clears throat> not have any effect on the world and the world doesn't have any effect on you. You need the world for money, for food, for house, this, that's the necessary things, <clears throat> and the world stays the same, and you stay the same. No. It has to be split. What does it mean, split? <clears throat> that when you're, even when you're on the world, the world has to be able to see godliness. The world has to be able to see what's above. It has to be split. The higher things show down into the world. And similarly, the world... You make the world feel God. What does this mean? God is creating everything. And God creates everything for a purpose. Without God, there's no purpose in anything except what you decide to make it. <clears throat> and then you make it arbitrarily. So there's no purpose to your purpose. You just get along. But if God creates everything, it means that everything is being created with God's intention. Everything is important. Every moment is important. That's what it means putting godliness into the world. That the world, every detail of the world has a purpose to it. Nothing is here, how they say, in Hebrew they have the word stam. Now this is a bit overwhelming. Stam means ordinary. So just, you know, just no importance. What? No, stam that's an abbreviation, what you're talking about, of Sefer Torah, Tefillin, and Mezuzah. No, this is, <clears throat> this is a word. <clears throat> Stam means ordinary, unimportant. Stam is just there. By the way, nothing is by the way. Nothing is not important. Everything is important. Maybe we don't know the importance of everything. But still, God must, because God is creating it. That's if you believe that God is creating, and that's the purpose of the Jews, that everyone should believe and eventually see and feel that everything in the world is here with a purpose. And there is no such thing as an accident. Everything happens with divine intention. We always don't understand what the reason is. Everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. But there's a lot of things which we cannot see the reason. For instance, people get sick, people die, holocaust, terrible things happen. A lot of times we'll, only Mashiach will answer certain questions. And Allah will have a lot of I answers. I think I know Parvus. He'll have a lot of answers. Hatred. The Mashiach and you. But isn't hatred part of the reason for holocaust? No, the, the immediate causes we know what happened. We, we don't understand. Hatred, the question is what is the good... What is the good of it? What is the good that came out of things? Of course we know. A person, God forbid, he gets run over by a truck. We know the truck was driving. There's laws of physics. And when a truck that weighs four tons, whatever, drives over a person's uh, uh, inner organs, they don't usually last. Game over. Right? But, but what, there's something good in this. What is the good in it? Right? What is the good in this? It's not game over. There must be that there is something beyond this. Right? 
We don't know. There's a lot of things which we don't understand. You can't hurt or help anyone without Hashem. <clears throat> Ready? Let's go. Right, of course. Okay, so that's number one. Number one is they have to have split hooves. Means One meaning is that the earth has to be open to the heavens. The earth has to see that there's a purpose in everything. Everything physical has a purpose to it. It has to be open to the heavens, and that's the job of the Jews to do this. You have to have split hooves. Was be involved in the world, but you have to also shine meaning and Judaism and godliness purpose into the world. Good. Number one. Number two, you have to have a right side and a left side. The hooves have to be split. You don't th- go through life as, you know, case sera, sera, whatever happens, just happens. You know, just, you know, life is but a dream. Whatever comes my way, I'll just do it. If I like it, I'll do it. If I don't, I won't. Well, that's, you know, whatever happens, just happens. That's good. Says the Rebbe, no. You have to have a right side and a left side. A right side is an accepting side. Accepting and appreciating. And the left side is pushing away. At certain times, certain things, you have to reject. <clears throat> Shouldn't just eat anything that comes in your way just because you're hungry. Oh, I'm hungry. And here, look, God put in front of me this big sandwich. This is God's will. And also, look at this. I have these te- teeth in my mouth. Wow, and I got a tongue. And look at this. My mouth opens up. And I can put it in my mouth. And I eat it. I chew it. And it's good. And that's God's will, right? It says, no. That is a way of, right, of foolish living. What me worry? Right, the famous Alfred E. Newman. Maybe a lot of our listeners don't know what that is. <clears throat> what do I care? Just do it. Just do it. There's even a big sign. Just do it. No, says the Rebbe. There are certain times when you have to push things away that you want to do. And there are certain times where you must draw close things that you don't want to do. You have to always be going through life with a right and a left hand. You have to use your power of judgment all the time. And if you don't know what to judge, so take advice. And if you don't know who to advise, then learn, pray, but don't just do things automatically. As the Nazis used to say, think with your arms, think with your thighs. Right? Horrible just, idea. Just do it. Just go and do it and don't <clears throat> don't think. Terrible idea, right. Horrible so idea. You have to think the, your mind before you do it. That's think the idea of <clears throat> the hooves have to be split. Okay, what's this idea of <clears throat> chewing the cud? Wait a second, where are we now? Oh, Ches. We're in Simon Ches. See where is Ches? You have it? Yes. So split hooves means you have to think, you have to judge, right? Not everything is kosher, not everything is right. Also, not everything is bad. Right before you hate somebody, think about it. Think about it closely. It's a very bad thing to hate people. Before you say something bad about someone, you judge something. You say a bad word. Think about it. It could be that you're not judging cor- correctly. Right before you reject something, think clearly if this should be rejected or not. Maybe not. Maybe it should be. You should take the job. <coughs> Maybe you should take the offer. Maybe you should go and try to put the fill in on people in the street. Maybe, yes. Think about it. <clears throat> Ches. Hasimen mafris parsa. But this whole <clears throat> ability to have a split hoof, namely that because of you, the world sees the Creator a little bit, and also that you judge things right and left. Ain't no must speak, it's not enough. But Dore Simon Nosef, and there has to be an additional. Good? There has to be an additional sign. Shall male gera. If you want to be kosher, you also have to chew your cud. 
What does it mean, chew your cud? Lifnei kol pu'ula gashmit. Before every physical thing, sha'adam omid la'asot, that a person goes to do, derusha le'isa v'diyun heitev. Before you do anything, before you make your judgments, you should make judgments, it's very important, to judge if a thing is good or if it's not good, but before you do it, you have to chew your cud. Chew up all the details very well. Levarer pam v'pamayim, you have to clarify once, twice. Im la sota davar, if you should do something, v'ketzad la soto, and how you should do it. Rock as tahora behema, only then is the animal a pure one. <clears throat> Somebody just came to me, called me on the phone, asked me a question. He says he goes into the shul. It's a synagogue. Nearby him, a small synagogue. And between Mincha and Mairev, he speaks. And the people listen to him. But the shamash, the sextant, whatever, the caretaker of the place, he doesn't want him to talk. The gabbai. He doesn't want him to talk. And he gets mad at him. And he yells at him. And he screams at him. And he doesn't pay any attention to him. And every time he comes in, he yells and screams. He asks me what I should do. So I said, listen, you know, it's not your shul. It's not your synagogue. It's a very wonderful thing to talk to people between, you know, the two prayers and to give them ideas of Torah. But it's not your place. You know, you have to do what the sextant tells you to do. You have to ask permission. You have to ask permission. And, and, and if you, maybe he doesn't want you to talk. Maybe he wants you to talk after my riv. Maybe at a different time. <clears throat> maybe you talk too low. Maybe you talk. I said, did you ask permission? He said, no, I just, you know, there's nobody speaking, so I just do the speaking. I said, you can't. Okay, so here's, an, here's a good example. A person is doing a good thing. He's speaking, he's saying words of Torah. And he's speaking to religious people. And there is a free time between Mincha and Meirev. It's free. You know, empty. Nobody's doing anything. So why shouldn't he just, you know, go up and do it? So the answer is because there's an order in places and you have to ask for permission to, to, to do it. And if he doesn't want to give you permission, so maybe you can give a class afterwards. Maybe you can this, but why make, why make a war? You know, you can't force your opinions, even though they're good opinions. But you can't force them on other people. Yeah. <clears throat> or, you know, you want to give a class where you don't need it, then give the class in the street, in front of the synagogue. So that's, no, then that's the sextant. Not as a, but nevertheless, you have to think about things before you do it. You have to take advice and you have to, you have to, how do you say it in, in English? They call it ruminate. I think ruminate also is the same word for chewing your cut. I think so. Chew it over. Chew it over, right. La sot le isa, you know, le vore pam vayim, rak as then, the animal is tahor, is clear. Don't just do things that seem to you to be right. And afterwards, birur ma. There is these two names of God. One is called gematria. The gematria is of God's name. Yud ke vav It depends on how you fill up the letters of God's name. Yud is ten, but if you fill it up phonetically, it's yud vav dala. That's twenty. So it can be with also hey and with vav and with the last hey. So it could be sometimes this can add up to 20, uh, 52 and sometimes it can add up to 45. <clears throat> Since these represent two different powers of refinement that we Jewish people have that we can refine the world. One is called ban and that in a simple way means from below to above and the other one is ma from above to below. Not to go into it too much but what it does mean is that you have to deal with the world, but you have to use your mind and really think before you do it. You can't just do and say whatever you think is right until you clear it up first. A little bit more, we'll just finish this. Oron Osef is another teaching was given to learn from these signs of a bird. A bird. Lagabi Of regarding to a bird, Asur Listamech Ala Simonim Bilvad Vatarushim Gam Mesora. Regarding birds, it says you cannot eat a bird, even if it has all of the kosher signs, unless you have a rabbi that says that he saw his rabbi 
eat from this bird? And that rabbi, why did he eat? Because he saw his rabbi. In other words, that's called Masura. It has to be handed down <clears throat> from some sort of a very, very reliable rabbi that it's okay. Lechor, at first glance, why do you have to have Masora? Why do you have to have a rabbi telling you to do that it's okay? It says in the Torah what the signs are. You can look in the Shulchan Aruch what the signs of a permissible bird are. But it means a person should never re- rely on his own mind. A person can be right 99% of the time and throw the world into total confusion by the hundredth time if he makes a mistake. That's what Korach did. Everybody believed him because he was always right. Doag, Achitofel, Absalom, these people that warred against King David and warred against Moshe, they made a war because they were impressive people and they were intelligent people, they were successful people and they were charismatic people, and they were <clears throat> genius people, amazing leaders, but they trusted themselves too much. <clears throat> because of that, they made one wrong decision and they believed in their wrong decision 100%, and it ended up that they almost destroyed the whole world, they almost killed King David and then also Moshe. It's possible to learn the whole Shulchan learn the whole Shulchan Aruch. And according to what he's thinking, to be a very ultra orthodox and very careful Jew. And at the same time, he can be in the depths of hell. He can pull his whole congregation down and his whole self. Because he trusts himself too much. Tzorichim liyos masura. There has to be a hand down from a previous generation. You have to take advice from people greater than you. Shemash muto gam hit masrut. Masura means it's given down to you, but it also means you give yourself over. Hit kashrut la rebbe. That's the whole idea of a rebbe. A rebbe is a person that does not make a mistake. A rebbe is like a prophet. The prophets never made mistakes. If a prophet ever gave one wrong prophecy, then he's not a prophet. <clears throat> he's a smart man, a great man. A Rebbe is a prophet. A Rebbe is a person that he never makes a wrong statement, ever. Is that possible? That's what a Rebbe is. You have to be given over to the Rebbe. A Rebbe, <clears throat> the Rebbe Tzayed, Rebbe Sha'osek Bahatzalat. It has to be a hunter, a Rebbe that hunts. What does it mean to hunt? A rabbi that goes out and saves other Jewish people. And he's expert in Jewish souls. Them and in their names. Shel Eitzah Tayotzer. And he knows also how the Yetzer Horror works with each and every person. And how to <clears throat> defend against it. That is the type of person you have to ask if you want to be a kosher Jew. So kosher Jew depends on three things. In addition to learning Torah and doing the commandments, of course. But you have to have split hooves and you have to chew your cud. <clears throat> and there has to be what's called a masora. Split hooves means that you try to put godliness and think about Hashem and everything that you do. And also you have to have a right and a left. You have to <clears throat> make decisions all the time. Don't just do things regular. Having chewing your cud means how do you make these decisions? That you chew things over very, very well. And you should take the advice of people that are above you, especially of the Rebbe. <clears throat> Every Jew has to have a Rebbe connected to the Rebbe, but you also have to have a Rav, uh, a person that can advise you, and also have to have a friend that you can talk things over with. Very Three very necessary things. Don't believe in yourself, and then you'll be a kosher animal. <clears throat> These are just three aspects. I just feel like, <clears throat> how does this relate to the animal itself? This, 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 we're learning a lesson. Yeah. From the well, the Rebbe went over that. He said some people say that this is what causes the animal to be kosher, and some people say that this is just a sign. 
<clears throat> whatever it is, it makes no sense. There's absolutely no logical reason why a goat is kosher and a horse is not kosher. Right? A goat is, in a lot of ways, much more wild than a horse is. You can't, you can't ride a goat, right? as far as I know. A horse you can tame, you can ride on a horse. Right? A horse is a... <coughs> Why not marry? Why not marry? Why not ride on a horse? Oh, what's this one saying? <laughs>